So this is a first authentic uh, yoga for all event. And I give you a warm welcome, bienvenidos. So what is yoga? Why are we all here? To me, yoga is a gadget-less technology um, that elevates consciousness. And it has been, I'm convinced, for me at least, that it is the best way for self-improvement. While I still slowly make my work, um, my way through all the uh, all the vices or bad qualities, uh, anger, stress, we all suffer from that on a daily basis. So for me, this is a tool I use personally to uh, mitigate the effects of everything that we do to ourselves, uh, to be in a constant state of despair or suffering. It is also a self-sufficient practice, so you don't need any external aids. And it is a discipline above everything else, which has to be done on a daily basis, uh, preferably at the same time to get the maximum benefit. And that it is benefit, uh, beneficial and accessible to everyone if practiced in the right way. You don't need expensive mats or props or pants as many of us um, might have fallen into the marketing scheme <laughs> of Lululemons or uh, other brands out there who really want to charge a lot of money for all kinds of yoga related things. Isn't it uh, really something that schools or universities, they don't even teach us how to sit or eat or relax or breathe. These are the basic things. Uh, that we don't really know how to conduct ourselves ourselves in a graceful ma manner. So in this session and in the upcoming sessions uh, throughout the day, we will look at the basics of life in general, as well as the holistic benefits of a practice like yoga on International Yoga Day today. Because we need to go in and in is the only out with all the external dis distractions that we have on a day-to-day -day basis, it is increasingly important in the times that we live in to not let what is outside affect you on the inside. Yoga is way more than the physical postures uh, that a lot of people hear about asanas and the headstand. Actually, only 1% of yoga, according to a great wise man called Patanjali. He compiled all the, uh, all there was to know about yoga in very short 196 sentences that were full of wisdom. And then today called the Yoga Sutras of Patanjali. Out of those 196 sutras, there's only three sutras that talk about uh, asanas or the physical postures. So you can imagine that's only 1% of the great discipline of yoga. So what is the 99%? What does it consist of? Well, in this conference, we're striving to create awareness for that, particularly as it regards to lifestyle, diet, meditation, spirituality, breathing. And of course, we'll be doing some postures too. And again, I give you a warm welcome and thank you very much for tuning in. And while you should definitely try to attend all the sessions with our amazing lineup of experts, we understand that it is also Father's Day today and you have other matters to attend to. So feel free to come and go and make the most out of this event. We will have a break after the first four hours. Uh, I, will be, I will be doing a short question and answer session, 30 minutes, it's open to all. Uh, it can be any question that you might have regarding yoga or a holistic lifestyle. And uh, I wish you a very happy Father's Day, very happy International Day of Yoga. And feel free to turn on your video screens if you'd like to uh, share your beautiful faces with us. You can use the chat uh, to ask questions and even unmute yourself at the end uh, to, if you want to share something. We want this to be interactive, okay? And uh, here I'm going to welcome all of the people who speak Spanish. Para todos los que hablan español, muy bienvenidos a, esta, a este evento. Es el primer evento del yoga auténtico. 
mil gracias por estar aquí. En esta, en esta sesión y las próximas durante todo el día, vamos a ver cómo yoga es mucho más allá que las posturas físicas. Solo un por ciento de yoga, según un sabio Patanjali que recompiló todo lo que tenían que saber sobre el yoga en 196 oraciones pequeñas pero llenas de sabiduría. Y, a, y de estos 196, solamente tres hablan del yoga. Entonces el 1% de yoga es sobre lo físico. Entonces, ¿de qué consiste el resto del, tiempo, eh, del 99% del yoga? Es lo que vamos a ver eh, en estas sesiones a través de hablar sobre la parte holística del yoga, ¿no? Tendremos sesiones en español, especialmente para ustedes, en la tarde a las 3, empezando a las 3 de la hora mexicana, hasta las 6, eh, antes de terminar el evento, yo tendría 30 minutos para este, hacerles cualquier, eh, resolver sus dudas, me pueden hacer preguntas sobre el yoga, la vida holística, eh, entonces siéntanse libres de asistir a las sesiones que puedan, porque hoy es Día del Padre, hoy también es el Día Internacional del Yoga, entonces eh, les deseo muy feliz día el, y muchísimas gracias otra vez por estar aquí. Ok, so uh, finally we can get to introducing our first guest, who is uh, a very a uh, special invitee. All of our guests um, have really dedicated their time and effort in putting this event together. And Dr. Duria Ship Chandler, she is a homeopathic doctor by qualification. She found her inner calling in the holistic reversal of diabetes and other lifestyle disorders through residential retreats at their eco farm near Pune in India. Her endeavor is towards propagating a medicine-free life for all. She is a lead facilitator of the Freedom from Diabetes residential program. And according to her, yoga is a way of life in sync with the laws of nature. Without further ado, a very warm welcome, Dr. Duria. Thank you. Hello. All right. Hello and a very happy uh, International Yoga Day to each and every one of you and congratulations Zeal and your team for your zealous efforts to put this uh, day's uh, sessions together at an international level. So yeah, wishing uh, you and the entire team of speakers following after me also the very best for a very enlightening day for all our viewers across the world. Uh, some from the yoga fraternity and some um, common people because it is authentic yoga for all. You know? So even if you're not into yoga, this uh, various sessions lined up for the day, I'm sure will help each and every one of us. So uh, just a brief, a little more about uh, me as you already introduced, thanks for that. So though I'm a uh, qualified homeopathic physician, I've always interested myself in uh, learning more about uh, natural healing, energy healing, various meditation techniques, and uh, of course, uh, done various programs on life skills management and stress management. And it has been my endeavor that one can lead a medicine-free life with optimum health if one is in sync with uh, nature's laws. So we do uh, promote and educate people for various uh, residential programs that we have. We have a Yes You Can series that we are having uh, at our uh, eco farm. I'll just share a quick picture of, uh, uh, I'll get onto my, um, PPT so that we can move along as we uh, go. Yes. Okay, uh, I believe the audio screen sharing has been disabled. Am I audible to everybody? Audience screen sharing. Uh -huh. um, we can still hear you, so why don't we you go ahead and share your oh. screen? Yes. Okay. And we will okay. see if we if we will let you know if you don't if you're not heard okay. anymore. Okay. The screen sharing is disabled. Okay, I believe the screen sharing has been disabled from your end. Could you just for check on audience. that for the audience? Uh, if that is. Um... Yes, we're working on it. Sorry about that. No problem.
All right, so while that thing does uh, happen, I'll just tell you a little more of our programs. So of course, uh, we have a Yes You Can series where we have uh, programs to help people uh, know that a medicine-free life is possible, as well as our place, a beautiful environment, which is an eco farm. we are be doing organic farming and living in sync with nature. I have been blessed to be able to live here for the entire lockdown, and uh, I am quite happy with the lockdown in that sense. So uh, here we, um, Facilitate the place is also available for people to hold uh, various uh, holistic programs. So we've had meditation retreats, yoga retreats, Kundalini yoga uh, programs, as well as pure nature cure uh, retreats happen here, as well as people just come by here to connect with themselves, with nature and find their internal peace. Yeah. So a uh, beautiful place where we're doing some beautiful work. And uh, I'll just wait for the presentation so I can move ahead. Okay, we see your presentation, doctor. Okay, so we're just uh, getting on to the first one. Yeah, yeah. okay. And All right, make so sure we have this big yes. while in presentation <laughs> mode. <laughs> okay. All right, so Perfect. there we are. Uh, uh, normally, uh, people think that uh, we talk about what eating is all about, but yes, you can, and in our series uh, about eating for health. All right, so this is a brief picture of uh, where we conduct our wellness retreats, including the Transcendental Residential Program for Reversal of Diabetes and Lifestyle Disorders, as I said, uh, for freedom from diabetes. And so it's an eco farm surrounded by a lake on three sides and the mountains, and it's a pristine nature in the midst of uh, just half an hour from the madness of the city, the hidden oasis. So coming back to what we are here today for, wellness at the level of the body, the mind, and the soul. I think all of three of them, there is a unison, there needs to be a harmony amongst uh, the state of health at all the three levels if one has to be able to uh, achieve a supreme being, a supreme purpose of our lives. And the first wellness comes at the level of the body because uh, we do work on mind, but if your body is unwell, if you have a headache, you have a backache, you will not be able to work on your mind. It will be constantly distracted with the pain, with your body reminding you of that head and that shoulder pain or the back pain. So you will not be able to transcend into higher levels of your existence. So working at the body level, of course, it is primary and it is very basic, but still a very essential part. It is the vehicle that will allow you to progress in your journey towards your higher being. So uh, along with the physical part, which of course is uh, tackled through the asanas and various forms of exercises, I will be focusing more on what we put into our body uh, on the level of eating. So the primary question comes to why do we eat? First of all, why is it necessary to eat? And the first thing that comes to mind, I'm sure most of you all might be thinking, is to provide fuel to the body, to achieve the energy, to be able to uh, fulfill our daily tasks or further tasks, or if you're into any kind of sport or physical activity, we need that fuel uh, through the food we eat. In fact, uh, the world is right now confused with a lot of diets, a lot of fat foods, a lot of uh, focus on macronutrients, so much of food, uh, protein, so much of carbs, so much of fat, and the whole thing is uh, focusing around the macronutrients in various diets. But there is a lot more in that. And uh, before I get on to uh, discussing about details about what to eat, I could uh, first of all say that what I'm going to discuss today is based on my understanding, as well as what I have seen at an experiential level, working with uh, patients and participants in our various retreats. And there is no one diet which works for everybody as well as, uh, in fact, the same diet will not work for the same person through his different phases of his life, different physiological purposes that he may need to meet. So what I'm going to discuss today is more generic principles and uh, each one of you can adapt as to what suits you, what works for you and uh, um, as per your constitution. All right, so coming back to food providing basically fuel to the body. In fact, we have uh, also known there are so many people like Sun Yogis, there's Uma Shankarji, there is Hiraratan Maniji, who have just um, got their energy from the sun. 
just through sun gazing or drinking water, which is energized by the sun. And uh, there are many such people who are doing that. In fact, there are even breatharians, some of them who don't eat or even drink water. But uh, I think 99% of our population for us to do something like that is very difficult and not sustainable. So we have to reach a kind of moderation in what we eat, uh, considering what we are already eating and just making a few um, mindful changes in our diet. The second reason why I think most of the current population across the world like to eat is for the taste. Food has to be delicious, has to be tasty. So we add all kinds of seasoning, spices. We add fats and sugar and uh, salt to just make the food more delicious. But um, in the process, we have lost the natural ability of our body to be able to sever the taste through our taste buds. Early man never had any of this and his body was attuned to. So now what is happening is that uh, earlier we were able to differentiate what is good for us and what is not good for us just through our taste. But because of the masking, which has happened on such a large scale, we have lost this ability. And so we land up eating things which are toxic or very harmful to the body just for the taste of it. And the third, and again, a very current uh, need for people to eat is for as a source of entertainment either for self or for entertaining people, for celebrating, for events, for parties, for uh, success in an exam, or just having guests over and you need to entertain them with some food or take them out for uh, a dinner at a restaurant. So the basic thing of why we need to eat has somehow got sidelined and the focus has been more on the taste and entertainment and just thinking it as a fuel for the body. So what, we, what do we really land up eating? We land up eating the food that we love to eat. And there are a few photographs of the current day foods which are very popular among not only the young, but even our middle generation and to some extent the elder generation too. So all the fast food, as I said, is heavily laden with sugar, fats and salts. And that's why it tastes delicious. But it is just a momentary matter on the taste buds once it goes beyond your tongue. And that is when all the damage starts getting triggered. So you may love the food you eat, but does the food that you eat love you and your body once it's inside your body? So that's a question we need to ask ourselves and when we uh, head towards eating any particular food. <clears throat> and the other thing is not only what we eat, but how do we eat it? Okay, uh, most of us uh, have large portions. You're watching television or our favorite Netflix uh, serial or movie or um, reading our mail and just, you know, like, by the way, munching our breakfast or busy on our WhatsApp and social media whilst you are eating. So we are not eating mindfully with awareness. In fact, it takes roughly 20 minutes for the brain to signal the body that it is full. But unfortunately, what happens, we are in a rush, we gobble down a lot more quantity than what the body needs. And before the brain can signal the body, you've already eaten much beyond what was necessary for your body. And that's why we feel full, bloated, we've overeaten, and then we need some uh, eno or some digestive to help you to digest that extra food that you have put into your system. So when you're talking about yoga and meditation, we're also talking about mindfulness. And that mindfulness can extend beyond meditation into every act of our day-to-day -day lives, including our eating. So when we are eating mindfully, uh, we are involving all our senses of uh, our body uh, associated with the act of eating. So eating does not start when you put the food into your mouth. It starts much before that. When you see the food, when you smell the food, when you hear the crackling sound of either the food being cooked or uh, when you're chewing on it, uh, when you touch the food with your fingers, when you mash the food, unfortunately, Nowadays, with the fork and spoon and knife uh, scenario, we are losing the direct contact, which um, through Indian traditionals, we, uh, we still eat with our hands. Of course, uh, you need to wash them thoroughly before you do so. But when you eat with your hands, that touch also signals the brain what kind of food is coming in and prepares the body, the enzymes for the digestion. And it is finally when you put the food in your mouth, that is the digestion process, where the enzymes are already ready to digest, are now getting into play. And most of our uh, carbohydrates, the sugars, which our food is laden with, 
And sugars is not just refined sugar. It could be grains, it could be dals, it could be vegetables, which all have natural sugars in them. So for digesting all of that, it happens, the first phase happens in the mouth through our saliva. And when we just chew the food two to three times, gobble it down, swallow it down, the food and especially the carbohydrate does not get digested completely. So the age old saying of chew your food 32 times before you actually swallow it has a lot of scientific reason behind it. And uh, we also go by the saying that you must uh, drink your solids. So masticate it well enough, chew it well enough, let it mix with your salivary juices till it's almost liquid and then swallow it. And if you're drinking a sol uh, like a juice or a, a fruit juice or some drink, then make sure you again mix it as if you're chewing it in your mouth uh, in all the corners of your mouth before you swallow it for optimum digestion of the food. So eating mindfully is very, very important to help in the digestion, to help in the awareness, to help into what kind of food we're eating and how much we're eating. And the third and very important question is, are we eating right? I have tried to make my presentation as colorful as possible and I hope as interesting as possible too to everybody. So uh, you can see a varied colors and uh, a whole spectrum. And this is about the pH, okay? This is which allows you to understand the acidity and alkalinity of various foods. It's uh, important to understand this spectrum uh, ranges from zero to 14 and seven is the middle, which is the neutral part where normal drinking water, if it is pure drinking water has a pH of seven, which is neutral. However, I can tell you that uh, the RO, that's reverse osmosis water, is acidic for the body at a pH of six. So what I'm talking about is the regular tap water. I'm not sure what pH it is available in different parts of the world, but uh, neutral water is at the pH of seven. And everything to the right, which is in the shades of blue and purple, are uh, alkaline for the body. And all those which, is to, which are towards the left, moving down from six, five, four, three are acidic for the body. Now, a little bit of science, but very important to understand because uh, a lot revolves around this aspect about food and health. <clears throat> so um, the normal pH of our body, of our blood is alkaline, ranging from 7.35 to 7.45. So let's take a 7.4. And in this alkaline state, the body is able to work beautifully its various processes, metabolism, as well as its healing and repair can happen at its best. So every time the body deviates from the alkaline towards the acid is when the disease process begins. And when I say disease, it means any kind of disease, whether it's diabetes, whether it's inflammation, arthritis, all the itis that we know is nothing but inflammation, even cancers are thriving in an acidic body and they cannot survive in an alkaline medium because the body is well programmed to be able to heal itself, repair itself, attack what is not necessary, remove what is not necessary, but all this works best when the body is alkaline. And uh, here you can see in the picture that the more we use the things that are in the alkaline state are mostly fruits, vegetables, greens, and the scale increases like the Greens have more alkalinity than certain fruits. And as we move on the left side of the spectrum, uh, and uh, from six, which has more of uh, animal products, and uh, four, which has a lot of refined processed products, which are available very easily nowadays, and three, in fact, uh, towards 2.5 is what is the pH of most of our colas and fizzy drinks. The pH of 2.5 is a pH in which no organism can survive. It's a very good bathroom cleaner. So uh, imagine what we do to our system when we are drinking that can of Coke, which may come as a combo meal or a free part of our meal, but uh, it is highly, highly toxic and acidic for the body. So what happens when a body becomes acidic or even slightly moves towards being an acidic state? The body puts in all its mechanisms to try to maintain its homeostasis, that is its normal state of being. So it will extract minerals from various body organs, from its stores, mostly from our bones where the calcium is easily available. In fact, making the bones very porous and brittle. Osteoporosis is known to be at a very high rate in those who consume a lot of aerated and fizzy drinks, carbonated drinks. 
Um, well, not only that, uh, it damages the intestinal gut flora of a lots of uh, biome, which is there in our intestines, which are necessary for not only digestion, our immune system, for helping in various body processes. So we are actually slowly killing ourselves when we are drinking aerated water. And in fact, to neutralize one can of Coke, nowadays, I think you all must have heard of uh, alkaline water. There are lots of brands and lots of alkaline water um, things available in the market. So drinking uh, one can of Coke would require 11 glasses of pH 9.5 water to just neutralize that one glass of Coke. So it is highly, highly damaging to the body. So what else is uh, acidic? Let me just move on. So there is a whole spectrum, uh, not the whole spectrum, but uh, what things uh, which are available in our day-to-day -day life. On the left side, I have just mentioned a few. Cheese, meat, chicken, fish, eggs, dairy, okay? <clears throat> As you see, all these products lined up on the left side are obtained from the animal kingdom. Okay, so dairy and cheese are also from the animal kingdom. And of course, all different kinds of meat and eggs. These are all acidic for the body. But even things obtained from the plant kingdom are acidic, like you have sugar. In fact, let me also bring this, when we talk about sugar, yes, the table sugar, the refined sugar is highly acidic for the body. But even more of the refined carbs that we are eating nowadays, be it maida and uh, that's white flour. So all of these things which suddenly spike your blood sugars are making your body acidic too, right? So it's uh, white sugar has been known as a white poison for a long time now, but uh, it is one reason is why is because it is highly acidic for the body. And of course, a morning cup of tea and coffee, which, which we can't start our day, which is also highly toxic and acidic for our systems when consumed in large quantities. And uh, when we add milk to it and we add sugar to it, so we're just increasing the acid content of our morning fuel. In fact, when we say break fast, it is you're breaking the nights fast and instead of putting something healthy into our system first thing in the morning, you're putting in that cup of tea and that cup of coffee. Of course, next is wine and alcohol. Uh, there are many reasons, but it is also very acidic for the body. It is a toxic uh, toxin for the body. Body wants to flush it out through any which means that it knows. Vinegar here I'm talking about is the synthetic vinegar, but apple cider vinegar is a good substitute. Salt, again, it is the refined uh, salt, but if you're using rock salt, Himalayan salt, pink salt, or black salt, it's a better option, richer in minerals. Colas we've already talked about, and here we come to wheat. I think there's a lot of things going on about wheat and the wheat belly, uh, lots of uh, posts on the WhatsApp university, which we all are also getting uh, educated on. But here, typically, I'm talking about the wheat, which is the genetically modified wheat. It is high in acid. It is high in gluten, which again causes more inflammation in the body and is quite low on micronutrients. So at least in India and uh, also in parts of the world, uh, we have a substitute, which is called emmer wheat, farrow wheat abroad. And in India, we call it kapli wheat. And also different uh, traditional, it's an ancient traditional variety of wheat, which was uh, consumed over 2000 years ago. Uh, indigenous variety, and uh, it is not uh, so acidic or inflammatory, and it's a comparatively safer option of wheat uh, for those who are hooked on to wheat. All right, so uh, just give me a second. I just need to drink a sip of water. All right, so the foods that really love you are the ones that will make your body alkaline. And you can see all the colors which are there in all the fruits and vegetables. There are natural antioxidants, flavonoids, and uh, lots of things which help your body to heal. They are not only uh, giving you a lot of uh, alkalinity, but also a rich source of micronutrients. Coming back to the point, I talked about macronutrients, that's protein, carbs, fats, but we are not considering the micronutrients in our body required in micro quantities. So most of the salts, minerals like calcium, magnesium, sodium, zinc, zinc is again very popular now. People are knowing its role in immunity and uh, iron, etc., and a lot of vitamins which are necessary for the functioning of the body. In fact, uh, 
the vitamins, a lot of them get uh, denatured by cooking, by heating, by the sun. And uh, uh, a few of these minerals and vitamins are necessary for the conversion of, uh, say, the glucose that you're eating into energy for a lot of the body vital processes. And most of these micronutrients get destroyed when we cook excessively and when we process them through various means of processing food. So uh, one beautiful uh, thing in which you can get a lot of micronutrients packed into your body first thing in the morning, and this is something I would like to share with all of you. And uh, uh, this is my takeaway in one of the things that I would like uh, you all to begin with. Okay, so this is the awesome, because it does taste awesome, uh, quite a few Indian and Indian origin people here. So most of you all must have tasted the popular Indian chaat, or that's the pani puri and uh, you know the tongue tickling uh, preparations, which are very popular in India. It's a combination of spice, uh, something sweet, something salty, something tangy, all together, which actually tantalizes the taste buds. So it's really awesome. And uh, this uh, green smoothie is not only awesome to taste, but is also packed with nutrients. And uh, I think world over people are now sensitized towards having smoothies. But uh, my focus here is on the green smoothie, okay? Using uh, fresh leafy green vegetables, uh, which are rich in chlorophyll. Going back to our basic science class in school where we learned about photosynthesis and we learned about a green pigment called chlorophyll in the leaves, which uh, convert the sun's energy into food energy. And that's what we eat. That's what the animals eat, like say the sheep, cows, etc. And those who eat non-vegetarian food, they're eating uh, the energy through that into their system. So basically the chlorophyll is uh, very similar in its molecular structure to hemoglobin. Uh, the central part of the hemoglobin is iron, while in chlorophyll it is magnesium. So uh, having this chlorophyll helps you to get a lot of magnesium and also helps in healing of your blood and boosting your hemoglobin levels. The only sad part about chlorophyll is that when you cook it beyond 40 degrees, it is totally destroyed. So when you're having a spinach dish, like in India, it's a popular palak paneer, okay, that's cottage cheese with spinach. So when you cook it and boil it too much, you're destroying all the chlorophyll. But as, once again, it is impossible to chew on chlorophyll and on the greens like the cows and goats and the sheep do all day long. So the best option is to grind it into your, uh, into your regular blender at home. So I'll be sharing the recipe here with you. And uh, I believe the presentation will be shared or anybody who wants to take a screenshot can do so. Uh, so we use major greens, which could be any one of these. It could be spinach, garden sorrel, radish leaves, kale, lettuce, or beetroot leaves, arugula, or whatever greens are locally available in your country, which are edible. Uh, we tend to avoid uh, fenugreek and dill leaves. Uh, because they tend to be very pungent to taste and sometimes do create a little bit of a gastric disturbance. So any of one of these, maybe a cupful. Uh, you also have a choice of minor greens. You can use any two or three of these. The uh, popular beetle leaf of India that we call the pan, very highly nutritious. So you can use one of that and any of these, like maybe mint, curry leaves, basil, that's still see in India, coriander or parsley, celery as is available abroad. So any, uh, maybe half cup of these minor greens, add any one fruit, a seasonal fruit, a regional fruit. And if you're non-diabetic, you have a choice of any kind of fruit. And if you are diabetic, then you can maybe avoid the fruits which are high in sugar as of now. So any one fruit, and uh, you can add a pinch of these uh, very powerful antioxidants and anti-diabetics also, like cinnamon powder and black pepper powder, uh, half a teaspoon of rock salt, half a lemon, which is very essential, or any uh, vitamin rich fruit or gooseberries or whatever is available. And I would also recommend a fresh piece of ginger if you have or uh, organic turmeric, either fresh or in a powder form uh, to help your anti-inflammatory, antibacterial and boost your immune system. You also have a choice to add a teaspoon or two of seeds, could be chia or could be uh, any of the watermelon or whatever seeds you would like. Uh, just add one glass of water and blend it well in your blender just for three minutes and drink it without straining with all the fiber in it. Okay, so this is the best way to start your morning rather than the acidic cup of tea and coffee. If you put in this alkaline, awesome tasting, densely packed with nutrients, green smoothie first thing in the morning, it's going to be a jump start to your day. 
a lot of micronutrients, live micronutrients, phytonutrients, there are enzymes, there are um, nutraceuticals, everything is packed in them. So we have so many people who have found their energy levels just boosted up dramatically within a week of having this. Okay, uh, once again, a word of caution, in case you have a tendency towards uh, uric acid, then you can avoid uh, spinach, or if you have uh, kidney stones, you can avoid the major greens. You can use uh, maybe cucumber, ash gourd, bottle gourd as your major uh, uh, blend uh, base of your smoothie. And uh, if you have any kind of kidney issues, please take uh, the recommendations from your local doctor before you get onto this. And for children, uh, growing children, you can add bananas, you can add dates, and you can just see how they love this uh, and the beautiful start to the morning rather than cereal and uh, milk, which you want to pack them off to school with. This is a great way to uh, have them also start uh, at the physical and mental level. Okay, so this is about the nutrient dense green smoothie, which um, maybe you can start off from tomorrow itself. Uh, again, a word of caution, if you are, this is raw, so make sure you clean it properly before you use it. Uh, and if it is organically sourced, it's even better. Otherwise, uh, at least treat it to remove any pesticides and fertilizers, chemicals that may uh, be there in it. Okay, and uh, the next thing I would recommend is to know uh, about the four important components of your food. Let your meal plate be balanced like a quarter each of your grains, your dals or legumes or uh, pulses, whatever you may have, lentils. Uh, one portion of your cooked vegetables and make sure there is one portion of raw or salad in your meals. This is minimum, of course, uh, if you feel like you can have more of the salad. And if you feel like having more of the grains, then you can make sure you're again balancing your second round with all of these uh, essential components because each component is necessary uh, for the various micronutrients and macronutrients that the body needs. And uh, I've already stressed enough that raw is the best because you're not only getting the micronutrients uh, in the best form, there are a lot of live micronutrients, which also the body needs. There's a lot of fiber and uh, vitamins, enzymes, minerals that are, are present. So make sure you can incorporate raw in every meal of your plate, whether it's breakfast, lunch, or dinner. <clears throat> okay. If we say raw is king, we say soaked is the super king. So here we're talking about soaked nuts, okay? And specifically, I would be mentioning on almonds and walnuts. I think this is an age old tradition in Indian practice. Everybody is soaking their nuts and uh, first thing giving to their family members and growing children and for the brain power, etc. cetera. Uh, yes, it is packed in fiber, proteins, so vitamins, micronutrients, and uh, the essential uh, fats for the body. Um, but the thing is why we need to soak it, because if you understand that the almond is basically a seed which was meant to grow into a tree. So uh, nature has coated it with certain uh, inhibitor enzymes like phytic acid and phytates. So they prevent uh, the body from absorbing the nutrients from it. And uh, they in fact may interfere with other body system uh, functions. So we need to soak them, ideally for minimum two hours or maybe overnight or for eight hours and throw the water away, okay? Uh, the water has those phytate, phytates which are dissolved in them. Do not drink that water or use that water. Preferably, you can even peel the almond and uh, we recommend to you uh, have it towards the evening or uh, night uh, because that's when the body is assimilating um, and healing, repairing, rebuilding. So whatever the nutrients you've got in them would be uh, available for the body. So soaking is great. Uh, it also releases because it's the initiation of a germination. The seed now thinks I'm going to become into a tree. So there are a lot of enzyme changes in the seed happening, in the almond happening. Release of a lot of uh, vitamins. Uh, the protein becomes uh, more easy to digest. And of course it becomes soft and easy to chew. So, uh, Please do soak your nuts before having them. In fact, as an experiment, you can soak some walnuts and you will see that uh, the walnuts, when they are unsoaked, they're a little bitter. But once you soak them and have them, they have a little sweetish taste to them. So that's because of the enzymatic changes happening in the nuts. And the king of kings, okay, a kind of a superfood as uh, Zia rightly mentioned, which is not goddess superfood status, but yes, it is packed 
in the micronutrients and it is a most alkaline and the most live substance that you could be eating. Okay, so of course in India and in Asia also bean sprouts is very popular. Uh, bean, uh, here I'm talking about the green gram, that's the moong, which it is known as here. And uh, it is quite easy to digest, so you can even eat it raw. Uh, preferably one to two inches long, the sprout uh, would have maximum uh, benefits for the body. And as you see in this photograph, you also have a choice to sprout other kind of uh, pulses from the masoor and uh, the uh, horse gram and whatever. But some of them might be difficult to digest raw, so you can even steam them or lightly cook them and incorporate them in your meals. And uh, the best breakfast, I would say, would be to have uh, raw. So if you can have sprouts, raw vegetables, or even raw fruit first thing in the morning, that's a beautiful start uh, to your day. First thing is, of course, the smoothie, but as breakfast, uh, this would be a great uh, start for your body. And of course, nuts and seeds are also a treasure house of nutrients. So there are lots of seeds which are available. They're rich in a lot of minerals. They are also very alkaline. There are lots of micronutrients. So you have, uh, of course, flax seed, your sesame seed, uh, chia we already talked about. Uh, you have uh, pumpkin seeds, uh, uh, again, a rich source of zinc. You have uh, um, cucumber seeds, melon seeds, uh, sunflower seeds. So you can make a seed mixture and have roughly three to four teaspoons a day. They provide you a lot of good protein, a lot of good fat, and a lot of good micronutrients. So you can um, have it as uh, a snack. You can sprinkle over salads or just see how, in which way you want to incorporate it into your di daily diet. So I would say there are five S's in which you can increase the micronutrients in your body, which will alkaline your body, uh, heal and repair your body, and help your body to rejuvenate at all the levels. So one is uh, the greens here, which come through your smoothie. So S for smoothie, S for salads, S for sprouts, S for soaked nuts, and S for seeds. So if you can incorporate these five seeds on a daily basis into a diet, you can be assured of a good quantity and good quality of micronutrients entering your system. So before we sit to eat, two questions you must ask yourself, is it plant-based? I think I've already talked about why plants are rich sources of micronutrients, they're highly alkaline and uh, provide good fiber, uh, while the animal products have the acid and other things that come with it. And is it whole? Again, a very important thing in today's day and age where most of the supermarket shelves are filled with refined processed foods. And uh, refined foods could increase, uh, include a lot of white flour that uh, we tend to eat a lot of bread and uh, uh, biscuits, toast, maida products, uh, from pizza bases to uh, burger buns and a lot of bread in our Indian way of life also nowadays. Uh, also semolina, which is refined wheat. So we have rava, we have upma and a lot of processed food which is going into our system. Even on the white rice, so uh, a lot of the uh, bran and the coating is removed in the processing of the rice. Poha, which is a popular Indian snack, which is a flattened rice, puffed rice, which is murmura, and of course the popular steamed rice pancakes, uh, the idlis. Refined oils and butters are also harmful to the body, and of course fruit juices and drinks and refined sugar in any form. So what does refined food, how does it really affect the body? Uh, we see an increase in the incidence of all these lifestyle disorders nowadays, be it diabetes, heart disease, high triglyceride levels, high cholesterol levels, constipation, because most of the fiber is removed, and of course obesity, which is becoming a challenge and a predisposition to many more diseases. So uh, just an animated uh, way to show uh, what all uh, refined food can do to you. So it's best to have whole foods which contain complex carbohydrates where the body has to work to break down the sugars at a much slower pace where your body can deal with the uh, influx of sugar that's coming in rather than eating refined foods which have already simpler carbohydrates. So a quick look at what happens just when you make whole wheat flour into the refined white flour. You can see that there is a approximate loss of 50 to 95% of your micronutrients, whether they are vitamins or minerals, fiber lost 95%. So uh, definitely must think twice and take the whole option. So in short, what you can increase in your diet in the order 
maximize the greens, the legumes and beans, vegetables. Again, when I talk about vegetables, fruits, it's uh, what is seasonal, what is regionally available. And uh, of course, grains, uh, limit them to not more than a quarter of your portion. Uh, because especially in India, we tend to focus a lot on grains more than the uh, raw form. And of course, what to avoid would be, um, if possible, or at least minimize fish, meat, poultry, eggs, dairy, and dairy products, oil and fats, and refined, uh, refined plant foods, which would increase what we've already uh, talked about. Another thing I would like to talk about here is about juice feasting. When we eat a lot of cooked food every day, the body does not get the chance to heal and repair itself. It does not get all the micronutrients that it needs in the raw form to be able to do so. So it is a good practice maybe once in a week, once in a month, uh, whatever is possible for you to rejuvenate your body with the magic of juices. And here I'm talking about more vegetable juices and not fresh fruit juices and glass fools. So of course you can add a little bit of uh, fruit once in a while in a few of your juices, but uh, let them be more pure vegetable juices. And uh, they benefit you by cleansing and detoxifying your body. So all the toxins that have accumulated at every cell, every nook and cranny of your body, it helps you to detoxify, cleanse your system so that then your body is able to rebuild and repair itself with the micronutrients that it gets. It can re rehydrate itself at every cellular level. This, there's no water added in it. It is pure uh, vegetable juice, which uh, works wonders. And of course, helps to alkalize the body, which we've already talked about, that uh, alkalization is very, very important for the body to maintain its homeostasis for the healing, repair, and just proper functioning of your body. Another thing I would also uh, urge you all to know about is uh, I'm sure every religion and uh, uh, promotes this and all over the world, we say a little prayer, blessing our food uh, with great gratitude. There is also a science behind this. And uh, <clears throat> this has been documented by Dr. Masaru Emoto, a Jap Japanese scientist, in his uh, study on water crystals, uh, basically the message of water. And uh, they have uh, actually, uh, taken crystals of water, studied, frozen them and studied them under the electronic microscope and the effect of the human consciousness, whether it's our intentions, our emotions, our energies, what words we may speak or write, or the music that is played to them, how it can transform the molecule of water. So as you see in this uh, slide, on the left side is a, a drop of water, a molecule of water, which was frozen and checked this is from the Fujiwara Dam in Japan before the prayer was said. And after a prayer was said, uh, this is the transformation in the crystal of water. The food we eat, the water we drink is all water crystals. Our body is almost 70% water crystals. The planet we live has 70% of water. So if we uh, mindfully with uh, a lot of love, blessings, gratitude, uh, it has the power to heal, it has the power to transform the crystals, not only in your food, but also in your body. So, um, of course, this is largely covering what I wanted to say, but uh, I would also like to quickly add about um, when to eat, okay? Uh, people tend to eat any time of the day. People tend to eat is because the food is at the table, not when they're hungry. And even if there is hunger, you have to be able to differentiate whether it's really hunger or it is just because you see something and you feel like eating it. And uh, there is also a lot of science uh, we are reading nowadays uh, knowing on intermittent fasting. So it is advisable to keep a window of roughly 16 hours preferably or at least 14 hours between your two meals because the, basically the human body was meant to be able to fast and feast. So early man never had three meals and five meals a day at his uh, disposal. So he could uh, do with two meals a day also, or maybe sometimes occasionally a meal or just once a meal in a week. So fasting helps in autophagy, removing the dead, uh, diseased cells from our body, helping to cure and uh, cleanse the body. And uh, when you give that much of time for the body, uh, there are a lot of other processes, metabolism and healing happening in the fasting period. So um, I would recommend that you finish your dinner before sunset and uh, preferably stay raw in the morning and uh, first meal of the day, let it be post 12 o'clock and let that be a balanced meal, having all the four portions on your meal plate 
of uh, grains, legumes, uh, cooked vegetable and raw vegetables. So in conclusion, we are what we eat. The food you eat can either be the best and the safest and the most powerful form of medicine for you, or it can be the slowest form of poison. So make the right choices and eat the foods that love you. And uh, in case you need to contact us for more details or you would love to connect with us, uh, I'm just sharing uh, the Hidden Oasis, our website, our email ID, and our contact numbers. So, yeah, uh, Zeal, I hope I've done it in good time. And, uh, and yeah, that was, that was great. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Shitsandler. It was amazing in the interest of time, unfortunately. Uh, we will be taking questions only on the chat for later um, consulting with you. Is that okay if uh, people reach out to you with their questions? You have your email here. Yeah, I do have my email, but if there is, uh, if you think there is five minutes and we can just quickly on what I have talked now, if there is something which is pertinent and needs to come up. We'll, we'll take one question. How about that? Anybody have a burning question that will make or break your day if you don't <laughs> ask it away? Go ahead. Unmute yourself and ask the first person to ask will be the winner. <laughs> Okay. Okay. I, I, and there are no questions, uh, Zeal. But there are no questions. Okay. I say either they've understood everything or they've understood nothing. <laughs> well, I hope it's the uh, it's the uh, second is the first way around, right? Uh, and I understood uh, everything you said in terms of you know the five S. Like that stuck with me. The key takeaway. Sorry. Um, can you hear me? No, not too clearly. Maybe you could if you could speak up a little. Okay. Louder. Okay. Yeah, that's better now. Okay, can you hear me now? Much better, yeah. Oh, okay, great. Well, I uh, took away a lot from this uh, session. It was amazing uh, presentation. We were left uh, wanting to learn more, asking more questions. I'm definitely going to reach out to you with all my questions going forward. Yeah. And uh, it, was, it was great. Thank you so much for your time. Uh, and to all okay. our participants, uh, Thank you for a roaring success. Thank you for being here. Don't leave yet. Uh, we are going to start with our next session in about five minutes. So stay tuned, take a break, uh, and we will see you in a, in a bit. Thank you. Thank you.
Hello. <coughs> Hello. Yes. Am I audible to everyone? Yes. Yes, you are. Perfect. Okay. 